Welcome to Episode 8 of Agile Digital Business. My name is Vicki Maris. The conversation I am about to share with you is one I had with Mike Jackson about a very interesting perspective on teamwork. I have never aired this content, so I wanted to include it in the podcast before I head into the uploading of the episodes about voice search marketing and digital transition. I didn't want you to miss this conversation with Mike. Are you ready? She's an author, instructor, conference speaker, and I write songs and play music with her. Hi, my name's Scott Greeson. Let me introduce you to my wife, Vicki Maris, the host of Agile Digital Business Podcast. I hope you'll join me in wearing a different hat today for this episode of the show. My name is Vicki Maris. Thank you for being here. I'm about to bring you a recording of an interview that I had with my friend and neighbor, Mike Jackson. He does field trials with his horses and his beautiful English pointer dogs. And I talk with him out in his barn about the teamwork that's involved in that type of sport. One of the talks that I give and also sessions that I teach is about leadership lessons we can learn from the animals that are around us. I have sometimes called it leadership lessons learned from livestock. And I often think that I need to come up with a different name for the workshop. So if you have any ideas for it, I would love for you to add a comment on the blog post that's related to this episode or tweet me, reach out to me in LinkedIn, whatever uh, social channel that you're comfortable with, or you can send me an email at info at vickimaris.com. Mike has some interesting insight to share with us about the sport that he pursues with his Tennessee walkers and his English pointers. He travels all about the country in this type of competition. Prior to his retirement, Mike has worked in his career as a lineman and as a supervisor of linemen for the electric company and worked in some very perilous situations. Later in his career, Mike worked with a company that responded to emergency situations, so places throughout the country that had experienced disaster because of hurricanes or tornadoes or major winter storms. So he's seen and done a lot in his career and has some interesting perspective and is very fun to watch interact with his horses and his dogs. He rides by our farm as he's training his puppies or exercising his adult dogs that he uses in these competitions and has raised, trained, and also sold for some amazing amounts of money, very talented dogs that do these kind of field trials. Again, this is a little bit of a departure from what I bring to you in the show on a regular basis, but you know what? We are all working in teams, and I think we can benefit from looking at things through a different set of lenses and wearing a different hat, taking a different perspective no matter if we are transitioning our business into the digital realm or we're leading a team of online course designers, whatever it is that we're doing, we need skills in working with and communicating with teams. So let Mike speak to you about his experience in the team with his beautiful Tennessee Walker horses, his gorgeous English pointer dogs, and his fellow teammates, the other humans that he is working with as they go to these competitions around the country. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate that you're spending your time with me. I am sitting here in Mike Jackson's barn, and I am with Mike Jackson, who has done an interview with me for the other podcast where we talked about a trip that he was about to take 
uh, for Montana and North Dakota to uh, train his dogs and his horses and get in preparation for a competition season. Mike, thank you for joining me for this episode of the show. You have some interesting insight, I can tell already without even having asked you yet, about the teamwork involved in training and competing with your dogs and horses. So for my audience, would you first of all explain what it is you get them ready for? So Mike has English pointers and he rides a Tennessee Walker when he's competing with his dogs. Would you give my audience some background about that competition? Well, these uh, bird dogs we run, when we start them as little puppies, we get them used to the horse, being around the horse. The horse has got to be used to having those little puppies jump on them and bite at their legs and bite at their tail and, and not be unruly towards them. Uh, you don't want a horse kicking one of these pups, it might kick a child, so, so we've got these horses trained so they are, uh, what would be the word? Pretty patient. At? Very patient horses, but they have got to have some go to them as well, but they need to have to learn some patience and, and uh, be patient with these young dogs and, and when you're not be too excited around them. When you're selecting a horse for that role, are you able to pick that up in their personality when they're pretty young, or do you wait till you maybe see somebody riding a horse at one of the competitions and then buy the horse from that person? Like, at what point do you bring them onto your team? At times, you can kind of look at a horse and see if it is a smooth, gated horse, if, it, if it's got a good mind, not shaking its head, not big, buggy-eyed. Uh, you want a horse that looks kind of sensible and it gets relaxed at, at, when you're riding it. You kind of watch some of these fellas and how they ride a horse a certain way, and then that's what you begin to look for as a horse that's relaxed and and, and it feels comfortable doing what it's doing. And it might be a two-year-old, and, and sometimes it might be a four or five-year-old. And uh, that's what you kind of look for, something that's kind of relaxed and does not get too excited, want to throw a fit and rear, all those things. You don't want that. You want something that's very mellow, uh, something that, you can get along with, feel very comfortable on, and and uh, so that the dogs will feel comfortable too. We cross a lot of creeks and ditches and through woods, and uh, the terrain sometimes is walking in uh, plowed fields, and it is a different kind of of uh, feeling riding a horse when it's going through a plowed field or a muddy field than it is riding one in an arena or something. Mm -hmm. And you want one that is. Can, can do those things and it's it's pretty hard to find a super good one the good ones are really expensive so mm -hmm. but uh, that's what we kind of look for and uh, you want them to have some speed but you want them to be smooth because you're going to be on that horse for about three hours at a time so okay to take a quick break here from the content and ask you to subscribe to the show if you have not already subscribed. I occasionally make an offer available that's related to my workshops or coaching, and the only way for you to hear about it is if you're subscribed, because you'll get a notification when each new episode pops into your podcast player. The episodes announcing the special offers are only left in the queue of my podcast for a limited amount of time to give subscribers first opportunity on the offers. It's one of the ways I like to say thank you for sharing your time with me as a subscriber and a listener of the show. If you would like to suggest a topic or if you have a question, you can add a comment on one of my blog posts at vickimaris.com or follow the hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz. That's biz, B-I-Z. I greatly appreciate it when you share the show with a friend. In fact, if you'd grab a screenshot of this episode on your mobile device and post it with a caption about something that resonated with you from this episode, we can keep the conversation going around this topic long after the episode has been released. Just use that hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz, and at mention me if you'd like. It's at Vicki Maris in Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. And Vicki is spelled with an I-E, 
So at Vicki, V-I-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-I-S. Now, let's get back to the rest of the episode. Do you see some teamwork going on between dogs and horses and yourself in this kind of an event? You have got to have a, it's a whole team effort. That dog has got to know the horse and what the horse wants, and you will be able to cut the horse and turn that horse's head one one way, and that dog needs to look up and see which way that horse is headed, and that's the way that dog needs to go. When we're running these dogs, we kind of sing to them a little bit, let them know where our location is, and then you'll use a different tone of voice to kind of, oh, it's a, it's a different tone. When you want them to come on back to you, you'll go to hollering at them in a little different tone. Those dogs know that they need to either turn or they need to find you. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, they, dogs have got to learn to distinguish between you just singing to them and letting them know where you're at mm-hmm. and then versus where you want them to be. They, they think these dogs need to be out in front of the horse and the handler. And uh, if they get out to the side or behind, that's not what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. So it's got to be a team. And then you also will be having a scout who can assist you in looking for the dog if the dog's out on point. And he needs to be familiar with that dog, and the dog needs to be familiar with him. So if he is a little bit where he shouldn't be, he needs to be able to go to that scout, and the scout can be able to kind of get him pointed back in the right direction. So okay. it's it's kind of a complicated thing. The <laughs> dog has got to want to do the right things and go with you, and the horse has got to behave itself and, 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 uh, and go where you pointed as well. If it's down a valley or down a creek, across the creek, through the woods, why, they can't be bucking and rearing and all that stuff. They've got to be relaxed at what they do. So it's, mm-hmm. a, it's, it's all got to work together. And you start them out young, and as they get older, why, uh, it, it matures at about age two to three, and, and that's what you're looking for is a good finished product Okay. And, and, and a lot of teamwork. So I'm hearing several different roles being played in this team, if you consider you as the, what position do you give yourself? Are I you the be team, the handler. You're the handler. I'll be the team leader. Okay, and then you have your another person on foot who's the scout. He'll be on a horse as well. Oh, he'll be on he'll a be horse. He'll be on a horse as well. Okay. So, and the dog, the dog, who is helping you find. If if we go back a hundred or two hundred years, they're helping you find dinner. That's right. <laughs> That's correct. And the horse is your means of Transportation getting there. Transportation to getting there from point A to point B. So everybody's critical in this in this uh, team. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. Very interesting. How how do you get young people involved in this sport? Are there are there age groupings when you're at competitions? For the dogs there are, but for the handlers there are no age competition. So I might be competing with a guy who is 20 okay, and or a guy who is 80. And, and how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for about 40 years. And do you mind if I share your age? I am 65. Okay, so when we're recording this interview, Mike is 65, and you've been doing this for 40 something? 40 years. 40 yeah. years. Yes. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah. I just... You know, we quit hunting. There was not enough birds here in the state of Indiana. And a guy asked me if I wanted to go to a field trial. And I didn't have a clue what a field trial was. And uh, I got to see some dogs work and point some birds. And I thought, I'm going to like this. And so I kind of got going with him. And uh, turned out I liked it, you know. So uh, most folks my age got started because they were hunters and enjoyed hunting and then when the bird population kind of went down the state why we were looking for some other avenues okay so, uh it is kind of a sport not a lot of folks are interested in anymore because it takes some time and uh, takes some good animals it takes a horse trailer and a truck to pull a horse trailer to get to these to events get to these events and these events are from montana and, and they run some in canada to, to North Florida. Okay. So all over the United all States. All over the United States. Yes. All wow. over the United States. Would Would you give me one example of 
what happens when one of those team members doesn't do their job? The dog runs backwards and runs back up the course and doesn't stay with you. You know, you're allowed uh, for the dog to be gone about 20 minutes. Okay. During an hour stake. So if the dog's gone longer than 20 minutes, you're out. All right. Or if the dog decides that uh, when he finds the birds, he's going to knock them and chase them, he's out. Okay. So everybody has got to do their job. If, I, if the handler makes a mistake and flushes the birds back over the dog's head, the dog turns around and jumps and bites at the birds rather than stand there like he's supposed to, that's a handler error. Okay. Which I have made several. You always do those things. <laughs> the horse is supposed to ground tie when you get off. Sometimes my buddy's got one who will not stay where he's supposed to. He will run off back to the trailer. <laughs> okay. If you're not familiar with horses, the, the phrase ground tie would mean if you drop the reins and they Correct. touch the ground, the horse should just stand quietly where he is as the reins have touched the ground. Correct. And and you do have to train a horse to do that, and yes. but sometimes horses training just doesn't stick. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it sounds like maybe that has happened with your. It, it, it has what? happened to mine. Uh, we it just had the wind is picking up here in the bar. <laughs> it has happened to my horses as well as as uh, uh, my buddy's horse, oh, okay. and it can it doesn't make any difference. It they can be twenty years old, and if they're having a bad day. Sometimes they might just up and decide to just walk off with the rest of them. But. <laughs> what, what I pick up from that, if I'm thinking of my life in my career, there are times when your teammates do that. They, they, everybody comes in with a bad day, and sometimes the rest of the team has to pick up the slack. That's pretty much right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hopefully you don't have a bad day where everybody's having one. Yeah, that, that is not good That's when that happens. That's not good. <laughs> Wow, this is such an interesting uh, way to think about teamwork. I, this is a unique sport, and I appreciate you sharing it. Is there anything else that you want to uh, share with my listeners about? I've had a lot of fun doing this over the years. It has been aggravating at times, too, when you know the dog is just doing the right thing. And you run the dog for 55 minutes, and the dog is probably going to win. And that last five minutes, he runs off. Aggravate. Oh, that would be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it happens. It's disappointing, but you still got to, you can't give up. You've got to go at it again next week, so. Well, that's that's a great piece of advice right there is you just come back and you try it again. That's all you? we can do. Yeah. It sure is. Thank you, Mike. This has You're been welcome, very Vicky. interesting. I appreciate you taking the time to share with me and my listeners. Thank you. I've had a good time. I always enjoy talking to you. Oh, thank you.